Welcome to the Brigham Young's 10 Divorces video. Okay, uh, the prophet Brigham Young was perhaps the most famous polygamist of the early Latter-day Saint movement, marrying a total of 55 wives, some of them pictured above here. Uh, we're going to use this article from uh, Jeffrey Ogden Johnson. It's entitled Determining and Defining Wife, the Brigham Young Households. Published in Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought in, in 1987. We're going to use that uh, for quite a bit of the information in this video. All right, so according to this article by uh, Jeffrey Johnson, uh, he says, At the time of Brigham Young's death, he was divorced from 10 of his wives. So he had 55 wives. He divorced 10 of them uh, before his death. All right, so according to the Book of Mormon, there's only one reason good enough to obtain a divorce, and that is for the cause of fornication. In other words, you're cheating on your spouse. So 3 Nephi chapter 12, it says, It hath been written that whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication causeth her to commit adultery and whoso shall marry her who is divorced committeth adultery so saving for the cause of fornication that's that's the the reason that's good enough if your wife if your uh, spouse has cheated on you that's according to the book of mormon um also i think they got this information uh, in the book of mormon from the bible all right, so uh, the general authority, Bruce R. McConkie, had some strong words to say about divorce, as he does a lot of other topics. He's pictured above here. Um, this statement is from Mormon Doctrine, 1st edition, 1958. In the gospel view, all marriages should be eternal, and divorce should never enter the picture. But since all men, as a result of apostasy and iniquity, are not living the full and perfect gospel law, the Lord permits divorce. So, there's got to be a real good reason. Uh, in the gospel view, you should never get a divorce. Uh, but since people are in apostasy and iniquity, they obtain divorces. So, can we use this logic uh, for Brigham Young? Was Brigham Young uh, in a state of apostasy? Uh, was he committing iniquity? Why did he get these 10 divorces? Were they all cheating on him? I doubt it. All right, let's go to the church handbook in 1960. Uh, I think this picture here is the, is the current one, uh, 2021. There's still a church handbook, which has a lot of information and policies about the church, some of which disagrees with church doctrine. <laughs> We're not going to get into that right now. Church Handbook 1960 says, The church has always looked with disfavor upon divorce and has discouraged it strongly. It is discouraged strongly, yet Brigham Young had 10 of them. All right, let's go to a statement from the Apostle Joseph Fielding Smith. Uh, his book, The Way to Perfection, came out around 1945. He's pictured above. Uh, divorce is not part of the gospel plan and has been introduced because of the hardness of heart and unbelief of the people. So <laughs> I guess Brigham Young was not living the gospel plan. He had a hard heart and he had unbelief uh, because he had 10 divorces. And the Apostle John A. Widstow uh, in an Understandable Religion book, 1944, I think that was a series of radio addresses uh, that I wasn't familiar with uh, before this video, so I order, ordered that book. Widstow says, True religion is firmly set against the present ease with which divorces may be obtained. So many people uh, get a divorce too easily. All right, a statement by the First Presidency, this in October of 1886. You can find uh, this in the Messages of the First Presidency of the Church, Volume 3. Uh, it's a six-volume set. Uh, it has a lot of good stuff in it. 
Um, in there it says, divorce is an evil of no ordinary character, not only bearing a harvest of sorrow and suffering in this life, but also having a far-reaching influence into the world beyond the grave and possibly involving others in ruin who had no voice in the separation or power to avert its occurrence. Uh, those would be the children, right? Having no voice uh, and no power to stop the divorce. Could be other people in the family as well. But divorce is an evil. So was Brigham Young committing evil? It bears a harvest of sorrow and suffering. So was Brigham Young creating a, a lot of sorrow and suffering through these uh, 10 divorces. Okay, let's go to a statement uh, by the prophet David O. McKay in General Conference 1969. He says, Christ's ideal pertaining to marriage is the unbroken home and conditions that cause divorce are violations of his divine teachings. Conditions that cause divorce are violations of his divine teachings except in case of infidelity or other extreme conditions the church frowns upon divorce okay statement from the prophet spencer w kimball uh, this was in the enzyme 1975 kimball said that relatively few divorces are justifiable but out of uh, brigham young's 55 marriages 10 ended uh, in divorce so that's more than a few right so some of those were unjustifiable. Uh, Kimball also told members that divorce frequently results from selfishness and other sins of one or both spouses. So maybe Brigham Young was selfish, uh, maybe he committed sin, or maybe it was uh, the spouses, all 10 of them. All right, so let's get to the 10 women who Brigham divorced. All this information is going to come from Jeffrey Ogden Johnson's article, Determining and Defining Wife. We listed the full reference on previous slides. So we're just going to list it like this uh, for the rest of the slides. Uh, Brigham Young married Elizabeth Fairchild on October 3rd, 1844. She was 16 years old and Brigham Young was 43 years old. So that's a really large uh, difference, a wide gap there. She was only 16 a teenager, Brigham 43. That's kind of gross. Uh, they ended, ended up getting divorced in 1855. That wasn't wasn't the youngest wife uh, that Brigham Young married, however. There was another uh, woman named Clarissa Decker, uh, who was only 15 years old uh, when Brigham Young married her. All right, the next wife uh, who Brigham divorced uh, was Diana Chase. Uh, Brigham Young married Diana Chase on October 10, 1844. She was only 17 years old and Brigham was 43. So a middle-aged man again marrying a teenager. Uh, they divorced prior to 1849, so they were only married uh, for like five years. Um, yeah, so that's Diana Chase. All right, the next wife uh, is Mary Ann Clark. And uh, for most of these women, we do not have pictures. It just kind of shows you the low standing of Brigham Young's wives, uh, that nobody ever bothered to take pictures. And uh, I think only we only have pictures for two of these ten. Uh, anyway, Brigham Young married uh, Marianne Clark on January 15, 1845. Uh, they divorced in June of 1851, so married uh, for about six years. And Brigham Young married uh, Mary Eliza Nelson on January 31st, 1846. It's, it's weird how a lot of these uh, women are named Mary. <laughs> I guess that was a really popular name. Uh, they divorced uh, by 1850, so only married for around four years. Okay, the next wife is Mary Ellen De La Montaigne. Uh, Brigham Young married her on February 3rd, 1846. They divorced in December of 1846. So, wow, they were only married for a few months. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, Mary Ellen couldn't stand Brigham Young. 
Okay, the next one is Mary Ann Turley. We actually have a picture of her in her older days, uh, pictured above. Brigham Young married Mary Ann Turley on February 3rd, 1846. Wonder if she, if she is a relative of Richard Turley, the the Mormon historian. Uh, Mary was only 18 years old, and Brigham Young was 44 years old when they got married. So again, a middle-aged man marrying a teenager. They divorced in 1851, so only married uh, for around five years. Okay, the next one is Mary Jane Bigelow. Uh, Brigham Young married her on March 14, 1847. Uh, Mary Jane Bigelow was only 19 years old, and Brigham was 45 when they got married. They got a divorce in 1851, so only uh, married for about four years. All right, next wife, Sarah Mullen. Uh, Brigham Young married Sarah Mullen on April 18, 1848, and they later divorced. Uh, we don't have the date for the divorce. All right, next wife, Eliza Babcock. Uh, Brigham Young married Eliza Babcock before 1853. We don't have the exact date. Uh, Eliza was 24 years old and Brigham Young was 51. Uh, so like more than twice her age. Not a teenager, but still pretty young. Uh, they divorced in 1853. So we don't know how long they were married, but uh, probably not that long. All right, probably by far the most uh, famous or popular wife uh, on this list is Ann Eliza Webb Young, pictured above here on the left. Uh, Brigham Young married Ann Eliza Webb on April 7, 1868. Uh, Ann was 24 years old and Brigham Young was 66. So what is that, a 42-year uh, age difference. <laughs> Is uh, Brigham Young getting advanced in age and marrying this this young, uh, beautiful 24-year-old here pictured on the left? Uh, they divorced in 1875, so uh, looks like they were married maybe uh, seven years. Uh, Anne later became an outspoken critic of polygamy, and she wrote the popular book Wife Number 19. See the picture above here on the right. Uh, subtitle is The Story of a Life in Bondage being a complete expose of Mormonism and revealing the sorrows, sacrifices, and sufferings of women in polygamy. Uh, this book came out in 1875. So probably, especially for these 10 women who got divorced uh, from Brigham that had sorrows, sacrifices, and sufferings. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, this was a short one, and it came in at only 13 minutes. Uh, but I think it's kind of an important video. It shows uh, that Brigham Young really wasn't living according to the teachings of the church. Uh, but that's going to do it. And I thank you for watching the Brigham Young's 10 Divorces video.